Well, hey, Vision. Okay, thanks for joining us today here to kick off the year, and we are actually wrapping up our Kingdom series. So if you're new here, or if you hadn't been here for the full series, you can pick that up online at viz.church. I do want to welcome our group on Facebook Live, and uh, I'm betting that some of you guys on Facebook Live are sitting there in bed or with your coffee or something watching us, and I'm glad, because actually our kids are back in Viz Kids in their PJs, and actually eating popcorn. They're watching movies back there. It smells really good. So parents, when you go pick up your kids, grab some popcorn. But if you're on Facebook Live, I'm glad you're joining us, and we would love to see you here next Sunday. So again, our Kingdom series is wrapping up. You can see we got the big uh, Kingdom uh, towers here, and, and we have just dug into so many neat things over these six parts of the series. Today we're going to wrap it up, and I think that God has something very valuable for you today as you start off your year. So um, if you would, uh, like John said, get your takeaway card or pull it out on your, uh, your device. And let's first look at the verse that's been kind of our foundational verse in this series. When Jesus was teaching and he said, really something simple, he said, seek first the kingdom and righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And in that he was saying, there is a collision of kingdoms. And I think you, you would agree with me that on this, on this earth, on this planet, in your life, you feel a tension a lot of times. There is something in you. There's something between you and other people. There's some type of spiritual forces that just there's a tension to where life is not just smooth sailing. It's not just easy, but there's a battle going on. And he says, I have a kingdom. I have a kingdom that I want you to think of, that I want you to live for, that I want you to be a part of. Think about that kingdom. That's part one. And also think about righteousness. And righteousness, like I said, is merely right standing. It's having a healthy relationship. He's saying, look, have a good relationship with me and think about my kingdom and much will be added to you. And if you think about your year coming up, I think we would all say, man, I I would like to have much added this year. I would like to have a better year or I'd like to have a, a year that I can, and at the end of it, say, man, this is a successful year or it was my best year ever. Jesus wants to help you with that. And in that verse, he is talking about having a life that has much added to it And Jesus wants to do that in your world. Now, our bottom line today is kind of a a tweaking of where we've been talking for a while, because for most of the series, we've been talking about the fact that there's a king and he's fighting for you. But actually, I've adjusted that a little bit today, because there's a king who wants to be fighting for you. But the reality is, if you think about a king in his kingdom, he's going to fight for you if you're going to fight for his kingdom. If you're not fighting for his kingdom, He's not going to fight for you. Like, for example, you know, my friend Anthony, who uh, I was holding his Clemson shirt, if he's sitting there with his sons at home last night during the game, and his son's sitting there with a Buckeye shirt on, no matter how hard Jeremiah says, Daddy, I want you, you know, cheering with me, Anthony's be like, no, man, that's in the white kingdom at the white household is Clemson colors. So truly, when we think about our bottom line, that this king who wants to fight for you but to do that, honestly, you got to be fighting for his kingdom. So what we're going to do today is we are going to look at a teaching that Jesus has. And even if it's your first time ever in church or just coming back after years, you hadn't read your Bible in years, you probably have heard this passage before. It's called, it's part of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' most famous teaching. And within it is just a couple verses that a lot of us would call the Lord's Prayer. Now, in the Lord's Prayer, he uses this word kingdom. And that interests me because we've been unpacking kingdoms for now seven weeks, and I want to still understand it more so we can truly be a part of a winning kingdom with Jesus. Now, the passage we're looking at is talking about prayer, and as Jesus leads into it, he tries to teach us a little bit about the environment of prayer, saying that really this is something personal between you and God. Certainly, there might be times where you would pray on a stage or pray in a small group or pray with your family. And that's fine, but that at the core of it, prayer is something personal between you and God. And when Jesus says, hey, let me, let me kind of teach you guys how to pray. Make sure you get out of this, this Lord's Prayer. This is not what to pray. He's not saying recite this every day. He's saying think like this when you pray. And within that conversation you'd have with God, it comes back to his kingdom. So let's take a look at this. And before I go in there... I did do a full message on prayer back in our starting point series. So if you're saying, man, it's it's the start of the year. I I would like to have somewhere to start. I would like some some help in my walk. You can go on our website and look back to April. 
in the spring, and we had a series called Starting Point where we took all these different slices of the Christian walk and taught on them, and one of them was on prayer. So let's unpack a little more on prayer today. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, it's only five verses. It's real short we're going to look at, but I think God can teach us some really memorable things out of it. Jesus says, this then is how you should pray. Again, this is, he doesn't say this is what you should pray, but this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we've also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now you, most likely, I bet you a good variety of us in the room could have closed our eyes and said most or all of that from memory. You know, you've heard it at a funeral, you've heard it on TV, you said it after a ball game, you said it, you know, with, with friends and it became almost something kind of, you know, like a, a tradition or just something you just recited. But Jesus has great power in his teaching for us in this. And I think some of it, so much of it focuses on this relationship between us and our heavenly father, who truly rules over this kingdom. And he sent his son to show us about this kingdom. Now, I'm going to need some help to kind of give me, give me a visual on this and unpack it. So they, they didn't know I was going to do this. But Kevin, would you and KJ come on up here? Grab that microphone and y'all come on up here. There's no Cheetos involved, no shaving cream, nothing like that, okay? But grab that microphone. You guys come on up here and grab a seat. Now, this, this is Kevin Colick. He heads up our student ministry. His son, KJ. And he, it's a father-son relationship. You guys come on around here, and why don't you guys grab a seat here on the stool. Thanks, man. You didn't know you are going to have a chance to preach today, man. You, I mean, now, okay. So what we got right here, what we got right here is a father-son relationship. So let's talk for a minute about father-son relationships. I got some pictures. Okay, because I got you guys are famous father son relationship. Did notice was happening? She did not know. Okay, all right. She did not that know. Sounds like something she would she would help. Depending on how this goes, I might bring her up later. <laughs> okay, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But serious. Okay, I got some pictures. So first of all, you think about that. Our country had a father and then his son, who both at one time were the leaders of our country. I mean, it's phenomenal to think that truly that God would do something like that in a father and a son. To, to rise up to leadership of that importance. So you see, okay, key father-son relationship. Now, if you're big on movies and TV, you probably know these next guys, you know, because Donald Sutherland, thank goodness, gave birth to Kiefer that could save us in 24 and all those movies that Kiefer does <laughs> to save us, okay? Now, uh, then if you're a, a sports fan, and you know that on the left there is Archie wow. Manning, and he had his sons Eli and Peyton, who these guys have played in NFL, won Super Bowls. I mean, pretty cool lineage from father-son. So, man, there's some pressure on you, man. Pressure, okay? But we don't want to have happen is like this last one in this father-son that you see that uh, <laughs> there was this moment that was supposed to be so special and it was like, no, Luke, I'm your father, right? Your and so in that moment, you know, the father-son dynamic was kind of a little awkward and then Luke like bailed out and he was gone. So, um, but for you guys, where I'm going with the message today, and I'll, I'll only keep you up here for a couple minutes, but when you think about the Colic Kingdom. Okay, your house. Now, first of all, man, what, uh, what, what pro team you like? NFL? Philadelphia. Okay. He, Eagles. Eagles. Eagles, Eagles, Eagles. Okay. Only now, team. KJ, who you like, man? Panthers. And speaking of them. Panthers. Panthers, okay. Okay. Now, I know we can laugh about sports, but the reality is, as you raise your son... <clears throat> He's going to have to decide whether he's going to come underneath, you know, your kingship. Now, I'm not trying to, like, puff you up, but the reality is in your kingdom, you're, you're the king in that house. Beautiful queen. There you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, but the reality is, and we unpack today's message talking about a kingdom and how our heavenly father wants us to carry out his wishes in the kingdom. As I watch these guys and I see what Kevin chooses to do to pour into his son, I see him passing on values and traits and wishes. So just, and this is impromptu. He didn't know I was going to bring up here. But so Kevin, so, so how would it feel if you're raising your son? You got two sons, first one here. And if he wasn't going to kind of submit to the value system or the direction or the plan of your kingdom, how does that feel? Mm, I think for me, it would make me feel sad but it make me feel like i'm doing something wrong like i need to figure out how to like pour into him the proper way like i need to figure out what's the best way for me to get information to him so 
you know, long term, he can be who I know God wants him to be and the values I know that God wants him to uh, to have. So I, w- I wouldn't really be trying to figure that. Pe- I am trying to <laughs> figure that figure that. I know, out. and we are as dads. Yeah. I mean, I got two two sons and a daughter. And I'm trying to figure out too how to pass on the wishes of, of me and Meg in our kingdom to them. And so same thing with you guys. So now, um, KJ, in this, and we'll give you the microphone. And it's risky, giving a student a microphone. <laughs> it's risky. But um, how, how, tell us about your relationship with your dad as he tries to, to raise you in that kingdom. Do you feel loved? Uh, yeah. You feel um, loved? He, um, he's always, like, there. Um, like, if something, like, happens. Uh-huh. Like at school, like one time I got in big trouble for no reason, and he was like, he no, like, no reason, no, no reason, no reason, and, he, <laughs> and um, he like, he was like talking to me and like talking like he always like tells me how to like, turn like, to like I don't know how to explain it, but like to good and like, good. yeah, be better. <laughs> That's great. Okay, well. And I see that's all the questions I got for you. The pressure is okay. off. Pressure Let's have a off. hand for the Collet guys right here. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you. And if you are new at Vision, I will hardly ever, ever invite somebody up here, like, not knowing. But Kevin, he's, he, he can roll with it. But, because the reality is, in today's message, when we unpack this piece of this relationship between a father and you, I want you to be able to at least kind of visualize it. So uh, let's take a look at this passage. We're going to break it down piece by piece. Starting off with our Father in Heaven. Our Father in Heaven. And I imagine, let's picture these guys sitting on their front porch. Or let's say Kevin's sitting on the front porch. And KJ, he's kind of like rolling, going through the yard, doing stuff, whatever. And starting off the new year, KJ's thinking, man, I, I want to figure out what I can do this year. What I can accomplish this year. What God wants to do through me this year. And maybe somehow the idea gets in his head that he wants to talk to his daddy about it. And honestly, that is a wonderful gift that he has in his life to have a father, to have a daddy. So for Jesus to start this passage off saying, our father in heaven, he's saying, guys, look, there's a relationship here. This isn't just a system or a process or a religion. There is a relationship that your father wants to have with you. But this relationship, it's built on respect. Because if Kevin's sitting on that front porch and KJ comes by, he's like, sup, man? Kevin's like, KJ comes, hey, dude, hey, buddy. I think Kevin's going to be like, <laughs> evidently, you are not speaking to me. <laughs> but seriously, if KJ walked up, sat down next to him, and even just said, hey, dad. So repeat that after me. Hey, dad. Hey, dad. Hey, dad. Hey, dad. In that moment, KJ starts to kind of establish the relationship of, hey, this this is my dad. And in that, there does need to be a respect and a balance of love and comfort that God wants us to have with him to walk up to him and say, hey, dad. So one more time. Hey, dad. Amen. All right. The next piece. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. This here, this word hallow is about honoring. It's about respect. It's about saying, when we say it to God, hallowed be your name, that there's a reverence there. I understand there's a holiness, there's a perfection that's not in me. And we come before our Father and say, hey, Dad, hallowed be your name. We're setting him apart. We're saying, you are different than me. You're different than the other guys I know. You're different than the other people. There's something special about you. And honestly, in that relationship right there, I think it'd be even definitely a strength in relationship that I see in those guys that he respects his daddy. Now, with God... It's an, it's an awesomeness. And we talked about this in our Visionary series. And in case you missed any of that one, then get on our website and check out Visionaries because we dug into God's Word talking about all these different characters in the Bible. And when we looked at Isaiah and how he had a reverence for God to say, hallowed be your name. You are awesome. I will respect you. I think that's like KJ going to sit down next to his daddy and saying, I respect you. So repeat that after me. I respect you. I respect you. So, okay, so you imagine, so Kevin's sitting there. His son comes up and says, hey, Dad. And, you know, I'm imagining a teenage boy is probably not going to say, I respect you, but he's going to show it. 
He's going to show it with his body language. He's going to show it whether he's, he's tapping on his phone while he's talking to him. He's going to show it by listening. And in that relationship, as KJ chooses to show respect, it's a similar to this verse to say, hey, hallowed be your name. Say, hey, daddy, I respect you. I want to talk to you. Let's talk. It has set the environment for communication. Now, this continues with your kingdom come. And of course, this is our center point of today. That in this passage, when Jesus says, pray like this to say your kingdom come, well, my question is then, okay, Jesus, what, what is God's kingdom? And we talked about this in week one, where I, I feel like God's kingdom is shown in three places. Number one, it's in heaven. That there is a place where we will go, if we're followers of Jesus, that we will go and see perfection and holiness and purity. So indeed, the kingdom of heaven. And I think the kingdom of heaven appears in the body of Christ. When there are people who will love one another, when there are people who will be generous and say, you don't have, well, I will give so you will have. When people that will say, I, I will serve you. We see the love of Jesus pour into a church body that people would look in and say, what's different about those people? And we'd say the kingdom of heaven is there. And a the third place, it's in you. It's in you. When someone looks at you and says, why, why do you respond like that? Why, how can you have peace like that? Why are you generous like that? You say, because Jesus is inside of me and he's changed me and he's changing me. And they won't know the terminology, but they'll, they'll be thinking, man, there's something different in you. And you'll say, it's the kingdom of God in me. It's the kingdom of heaven in me, in our church body, in heaven. And so when we look in this passage and say, okay, your kingdom come, what does that look like to have his kingdom come? It's simple. Jesus said it's about loving God and loving people. In Matthew 22, Jesus was being peppered all these questions about what's the most important thing? How, what do we know what to do? How do you rank them? And certainly as you're starting your year off, you might be saying, and what should I focus on this year? What, what, should, what does God want me to do? I'll tell you, the number one thing God wants you to do is to love God and love people. I mean, that's what he wants you to do. And in Matthew 22, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second's like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So God, what he wants is for you to have a healthy relationship this way, love God, and a healthy relationship this way, love people, and that is truly saying, Jesus, okay, your kingdom come. I will live for your kingdom. That's KJ sitting here saying, whatever you want. So repeat that, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. So imagine Kevin sitting here and his son's like, okay, hey, dad, man, I, I respect you. And I'm trying to figure out what, what I'm going to do with my year, with my life. And daddy, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. So for Kevin, I think he's thinking, man, I'm going to unlock the resources of my kingdom to help you. Now, if KJ sat down, he's like, hey, dude, and he's, he's on his phone, he's not respecting him, and hey, I want to do what I want to do, I think Kevin's going to say, well, I'm going to adjust a little bit my resources I send your way, because clearly we're not on the same track. We're not on the same plan you're not pursuing what my kingdom pursues. And Jesus, again, in the simplest form says, my kingdom is about loving God and loving people. So if you woke up today or you go to work tomorrow, or if you got the day off tomorrow on Tuesday and you say, God, bless my year, make my year successful, I think God's going to say to you, well, whose kingdom are you living for? Are you living for your kingdom or are you living for my kingdom? And that's a tough question to ask because as human beings, our nature is going to say, my kingdom, my stuff, my power, my money, my peace, my, my wants. And it's just in, in Jesus' kingdom, it's not that way. Just like KJ saying, daddy, this year, I want to make more money and get the coolest shoes and win the first thing and do this thing. And Kevin's like, wait a second. Have you not been catching this, KJ? Our kingdom here in the Colic House is about following Jesus. It's about living according to his plan. It's about caring for our family and friends. He's saying, son, will you go there with me? And KJ's going to have to choose and say, your kingdom come or my kingdom come? So we continue. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
You know, it's a strange thing trying to understand what God's will is. Because you hear it at different times, I'm praying for God's will, or man, it, it was just God's will, or what, what is God's will? I think God's will is kind of like this, that God, he has an overall plan. He knows what is best. He knows in terms of time and scope that we can't understand, he knows what's best. Now, one of the ways that we really see this, I think, is in timing. Is anybody in here impatient? Come on up. Be real. You're impatient. So many times in your week and my week, you're going to say, God, how can I not make that light? Oh, man, how could I not get that spot in line? God, how, how could I be delayed here? Or, oh, what is happening? Why, why have I got to wait? I think God, in his understanding his will, he looks at timing. This is just one slice of it. He looks at timing in your life. And he says, I want to do things in and through you that you can't possibly understand. I want you to be at a certain place at a certain time to meet somebody or to be met by somebody for them to do something for you or you to do something for them. And God says, just try, just at least step back and try to understand that I have a different perspective than you. It's like this, like a puzzle. You know, imagine you're a puzzle piece and you got four pieces that connect to you. All you think about, honestly, is you and those four pieces and when they're fitting and how they're fitting. And you're saying, God, the pieces aren't lining up right. I need you to change these pieces so that my life works the way I want to work. And God says, wait a second. You're looking at this as a five-piece puzzle? He says, Matt, it's a thousand-piece puzzle. You're just five pieces in it. He said, before I can put that piece in place, I've got somebody over here that's going to connect somebody over here, and something's going to happen here. And at just the right time, I will put the pieces together for my kingdom's sake. He said, wait a second. Now, I, I want my kingdom. He said, okay, well, then give it a go. How's that going? How's that going for you? And I know in my world, when I'm going after my kingdom, it's not going so great. But when I stop and say, God, wait a second, you've got a different perspective. You understand not just this thousand piece puzzle, but you understand it in 3D. Now, now how, how many Star Wars fans you got in here? Okay, we got Star Wars fans. Have you seen Rogue One? You know, okay, I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait. But one thing I, I, I love Star Wars that, that kind of goes throughout a bunch of them is the Death Star. Okay, not a Death Star. Now, I got a picture up here of the Death Star. With this Death Star, it's made of Legos. Okay? Any Legos fans? I love Legos. Now, you think about with this Death Star, you could be like the Lego piece that connects to a couple of Lego pieces, and you think, man, I'm just, I am so important. I am one Lego piece, and I know what needs to connect to me. And God says, wait a second. There's a whole layer of Lego pieces. You're like, oh, that's a lot. He said, no, it's not just that. It goes this way. And there's layers upon layers upon layers. And I think it's like over a thousand pieces that make up the Lego Death Star. And when you think about God's perspective for eternity and your puzzle piece and how it connects to other puzzle pieces and it goes 3D, he says, my will be done, Matt. My will be done, Andrea, not, not your will. And when I think about his will being done. It's this phrase, you know best, I will follow your plan. So repeat after me. You know best, you know best. I, will your plan. I will follow your plan. You know best, you know best. I will follow your plan. So imagine KJ. He's sitting there saying, Daddy, maybe, maybe you do know best. Now, honestly, I haven't heard many teenage boys say that before. <laughs> but if he did, and he looked at his daddy and say, Daddy, you, you know best. You can see beyond sixth grade or eighth grade or 10th grade. You can see beyond this year. You can see the larger scope of life. I'm going to try to follow your plan. I'm going to try to do that. That makes Kevin happy. That makes the father happy when you say, now your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us today our daily bread. This concept of daily bread is so hard. And I understand being a planner. I'm not saying be reckless. But there is something about a peace that comes from trusting that God has tomorrow under control. And if you're like me, there's a lot of times you wake up and you say, God, how am I going to make it tomorrow or next week or next year or 10 years or 20 years? And he says, wait a second. I haven't promised you all that. As your father, just ask me for your daily bread. 
Like KJ, man, when am I getting my car? When am I going to college? How am I going to do this? How am I going to get married? How am I going to have kids? How? And Kevin's like, boy, settle down. Man, let's take care of today. Let's get your lunch pack, get you to school. Now, Matthew 6, 34, Jesus said, therefore, don't, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself enough. Each day has enough trouble on its own. So I think what we need to focus on, who are we letting influence us about what we need? Because in America, it is so easy to have, let people push us into all the things we need, and that will totally snowball into stress and anxiety and worry. And God says, ooh, why don't you scale that down? You know where we saw simplicity in the last two weeks? Right on this stage, the kids from Uganda. I loved hanging out with the kids, the Watoto kids, that say, hey, let's just trust God. Let's walk with God. Let's have a joy and a peace and a contentment. I said, I, I need more of that. And personally, I need to hang out with people who think like that more. So as a father, I think he, Kevin's going to say to KJ, man, let, let's hang out with some people that are really just thinking about God meeting our deeds through our daily bread, one piece at a time. So the phrase is, please provide for me today. Say it. Please provide for me today. And as a father, I think Kevin's like, that's a piece of cake. I mean, I got today. We got the mortgage paid. We got food in the pantry. We got the cars working. We'll take care of today. We'll, we'll, we'll try to plan. We'll try to forecast. But man, parents, seriously, have you ever been in a conversation with your kid and they are stressing about things that are so far down the line, so many steps around, so many possibilities, and you're like, son or daughter, just, just enjoy today. And your heavenly father is saying the same thing about our daily bread. And he says, forgive us our debts as we've forgiven our debtors. Hey, this, this is about forgiveness. This is about grace. And if you've got any bitterness in you, any stuff you can't forgive people of, God's saying, let's work past that so that we can work on us. And I could unpack that whole piece. But God, in Luke, 20, in Luke 2.52, he talked about Jesus growing in wisdom and stature and favor with man and with God. And it's about healthy relationships. And Jesus, in this teaching, is saying, to have your relationship with God, your Father, healthier, work on your relationship with each other. <laughs> There's some things we just need to forgive each other for and get past so that with our daddy, we can move farther. I want us to have a healthy relationship. So repeat that. I want us to have a healthy relationship. I want us to have a healthy relationship. And when I see that in a son and daddy, I love it because God's picture of it is saying, Matt, I want us to have a healthy relationship. And the last piece about leading us not to temptation, but delivering us from evil, God wants to lead you into good places. God wants to lead you in places where you truly experience joy and peace and contentment. Now, this isn't a prosperity promise of saying, you walk with God, he'll make your bank account bigger, he'll give you a bigger car, bigger house. But Jesus promises when we walk with our Father that he will lead us if we let him. And so the phrase for this is, I accept your leadership and protection. So repeat that. I accept, I accept. your leadership and, protection. leadership and protection. And Kevin, would that feel good as a dad? To know your son would sit next to you and say, Daddy, I will accept your leadership and your protection. And, and you know, in that, that's, that's not greedy on Kevin's part. That's loving on Kevin's part. That's Kevin saying, son, Understand, I'm your dad. And yes, I want to provide for you daily. And I want to lead you and protect you. But you got to come under my kingdom. You got to be under my kingdom. I'll still love you. I'll still take care of you. But when we are on the same path with the same goals, man, I can pour so many more of my resources into you. So I got three steps for you. You think about what would kingdom come look like in your life this year. The first thing is spend time with God. You got to, because if these guys don't spend time together, there's no relationship. God wants to spend time with you this year. He wants you to open your Bible. He wants you to pray. He wants you to be in conversations where you talk about Jesus. He wants to be close to you this year, and he's waiting for you. He's ready. The second piece, align your resources for him. Just like with KJ, if he says this and says, Dad, let's, let's spend time together, but he doesn't go out and walk it and live it, Kevin's going to say, man, I, I can only do so much for you if you don't choose to use your time or your money or your influence. 
with my kingdom, there's only so much I can do. And the third piece, caring for people the way that God does. Because this is the bottom line. And this is happening at Vision Church, that people are loving other people. And when that happens, God smiles. And when God smiles, God blesses. And I want that in your life this year. So as you think about, God, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life this year. Remember, there is a king and he wants to fight for you. He does. But you got to be fighting for his kingdom as well. So repeat after me. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven.